Hello everyone, this is I, Monocle Man, and welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be taking a look at how this thing works. Now, if you do not know what this thing is, this is my four-digit combination lock, and as you can see, it has the four digits up, up here, four digits up here, as you can see, displayed on a seven-segment display, and the way this works is basically, you press the button, the code is 5394, the five will appear there, now I press three, five will move over to there, and the three will appear there, then I press 9, and uh, and then after that I'll press 4, and then these doors will open in a few seconds, as you can see there. You can walk in inside, pick up your insane axes, which you really, really want to keep away from, from your enemies. So then you're just going to go out there and press the reset button. And of course, the good thing about this combination lock is, even if you do get the combination wrong, like say you write five and then instead of three you press nine instead um, as you can see I'll just do this here if you get the combination wrong you can just press the reset button and everything gets reset so you don't have to worry about a thing so today we're going to be taking a look at the redstone behind this now I know I showed this in my previous video but I didn't explain it also just to let just to warn you if you if you are not very interested in this stuff I don't suggest you watch because it does get very, very confusing and difficult to understand. So, but if you are interested, please stick around because this will be your cup of tea. So for our first explanation, we're going to be taking a look at the button panel. Now, if we take a look around the back, you can see that the button panel is just our traditional um, signal strength button panel. Now, as you can see, basically, if you don't, for those who don't know what that is, it basically is a button panel that gives a certain signal strength depending on what which button is pressed. For example, if you were to press button 5, then um, a signal strength of 5 would, out, would be outputted. If you were to press bu button 9, then a signal strength of 9 would be outputted. Um, 1, 2, 3, it's all set pretty self-explanatory. So yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory. So yeah, I'll just continue. So over here, it leads into this green circuit. And basically what this does is this transports the, oh, the pink circuit's getting in the way. The green circuit just transports this signal strength over here to the signal strength storage array, which I believe this design was created by Crafty Masterman. Link to his channel will be down in the description. Basically what this does is it stores a certain signal strength. So say button five is pressed, then the signal strength of 5 will be stored in this set of comparators over here. Now, I know it looks like a pulse extender, but trust me, it's not. So, yeah, now that we've got that all cleared up, let's continue. So, and basically over here, we have the cyan circuit. Now, what the cyan circuit does is basically when any one of these buttons is pressed, it sends out a redstone output into this two-tick monostable circuit. And basically what that does is it moves the signal that is over here. So say it's signal strength of 5, it moves that over here. So the next signal strength in, of course, the sequential order of the combination lock, signal strength of 3 is put into here. And of course, 5 is then moved over to here. Then the cycle repeats over again and then again until it's all filled up. And when it's filled up, when the, um, and when it's filled up, if the combination is incorrect, it will reset. And if the combination is correct, it will open those two doors that you can just see over there. And then we have this cyan circuit over here. This is basically just the reset circuit. I'll explain how it works in a minute. But first, I'll just explain that these repeaters basically just deactivate these, these comparators because they are in compare mode, not subtract mode. I'll tell you about all that activates this um, reset line in a second. But all you need to know now is that there is a reset button here, and that reset button leads directly into that reset line. So the rest of this pink circuit over here, I'll explain in a minute. One thing I just need to clarify is that this green circuit, it transports the signal from that side to that side, not the other way around. So now that you all understand that, I hope this green circuit, this pink circuit will now be a lot more simple to understand. So basically what happens is once the signal strength that was originally outputted there is sent over to here, which means all which means all four digits in the but in the button is pressed, um, in the combination is pressed. Sorry, um, then um, it will basically send a signal over to this red coder circuit. Uh, as you can see, there are four other red coder circuits here, which is the traditional 1.16 red coder. It will also work in 1.15, but this is just the um, system that will work only uh, that will work in 1.16 as well. Basically what this does is this little, this line of the pink circuit, this one and this one are actually two different circuits. For, th for example, this one it detects when to activate the reset line. So basically it won't reset the system every time a button is pressed because 
then it just you wouldn't get the combination it's because if five was over here and it's meant to be here then the signal will just automatically reset so we can't so what we have to do is we have to make it so it doesn't reset until all four digits of the combination are in place and only then it might reset so over here basically what this does is it sends a signal through here once it gets there basically it pushes pistons in front of the reset line in the front of the reset repeaters which basically allows the reset signal to travel through and as you can see we don't need one over here because over there well it's already there you don't need you don't need a piston to tell it when it can when it's allowed to because it's it's allowed to it can when that can pretty much so basically what these reset what these reset lines are is basically as you can see if the um, it won't reset if it's a 9 if the number is 9 over here because the fourth digit sorry the third digit is 9 so basically it will send a it will only send a signal through that if one of these is if any of these are on except the 9 same with all the others pretty much basically they get sent along this pink circuit down here into the cyan reset line as you can see over there and basically that is how the circuit is reset. But of course then you be, might, might be wondering how on earth is the combination calculated? So over here we have a line uh, of redstone over here that leads out from this torch over here. Now this torch is one, two, three, four, five blocks away, meaning it will only turn on if the signal strength given at the end is five. And when the signal strength given at the end is f and only if the signal strength is five, it, that it, the signal strength leading into that particular red coder is five, then this torch will turn off, allowing this torch to, tur torch to turn on. But this torch will only turn on if both 5 and 3 are, um, are deactivated. Now, as you can see, we don't need another inverter here because this is automatically inverted from this. We could probably do the same on the other side, but, you know, it doesn't really matter and get rid of this torch as well. But yeah, so basically what happens is this is an OR gate, so that or that, if either of those are uh, on then of course it won't give an output basically what happens if um, if those two are correct then it will lead into this other inverter which basically means that uh, which basically tells the system that only if nine and the other two are correct will it give an output and just repeats the same until it gets to the end of course which is three three and all the others but um, behind it which basically um, means that after it's all, after it's there, it will basically send a signal from this inverted redstone torch all the way along this yellow line, which I have not counted in the dimensions because it just transports the signal from here, from this redstone torch to the door down there. Basically, what this red, um, yellow circuit does, it just transports the signal like so all the way to these doors over here. Of course, through an inverter, of course, which means I could probably take the way the one down at the red circuit, but like, it's easier to see when you have that inverter there. So anyway, that is the actual combination lock part of the circuit. Now it's time to take a look at the display. Of course, this is really simple. I'll continue doing this in the same clip. And the reason for that is it's just a decoder. Now I know that sounds like a really, really scary name, but to be honest, it's probably the most simple part of this circuit. Now it is the biggest and bulkiest part, but that's not really too bad because it doesn't really re um, involve too much brain power to build. And as you can see, basically what happens is say, um, I'm going to press the bu button 5, um, just so you can see, button 5 will appear here, and the way that works is basically, so over here you can see that the red coder is giving an output of 5 from here, which then leads into this torch tower, so that, um, so basically each of these redstone lines over here correspond to one of the seven segments, and basically what happens is when one of the torches is on, say, as you can see over here, the number 5 is on there, then all the others will be off, um, and then it just torch towers pretty much, and decoder lines like that. I'm not sure if there's any better way to explain it, there probably is, but I just couldn't think of it. And of course, if you just want to get rid of that 5 there, then you press the button to get rid of it. So, yeah, this was a fairly, fairly nerdy video and geeky video. If you were interested, please hit that like button and make sure to subscribe because that would really, really make my day. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Oh, and also, I sorry if I got tongue-tied a bit in this video. It was quite difficult to, under, to understand what I was saying as my brain was thinking a little bit faster than my mouth can speak. As that, that happens a lot, usually. So, yeah, I, I'm really, really sorry if I could, didn't explain that the best. But, yeah, anyway, 
So there will be a world download in the description if I do remember, and I'll also put a link to the original showcase um, as well. So if you if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and make sure to subscribe because many many hours have gone into this lovely Red Sun project. I think it's beautiful, honestly, and um, and also I would just like to set you guys the challenge. So. All of you who might be watching this will be fairly interested in redstone because all of those who didn't will probably have turned off now as it's probably boring for them. So for all of those who are interested in redstone, I challenge you to make this using the same concept, just a lot smaller and possibly even tutorial, t tutorialable. I'm not sure if that's a word, but I made it one anyway. So. Um, anyway, if you did like this video, please hit that like button and make sure to, to subscribe. That's the third time I've said that. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!